Hey, what's going on YouTube? Will here from All Electric back again with another video and we are doing a Kirby Country Road Chest with version 10 2019.32.12.2. So the newest software version that has been released to the public, version 10 and the iteration 12.2 of version 10. So we are about two or three software updates in and version 10 does not disappoint on this Kirby Country Road Test. So this is the easier section of road. We're gonna go through a small town. But before we do that, I wanna talk about the fact that winter is coming. So check out the floor mats. They are the best Model 3 floor mats. Shortly after my video last week, they did sell out, but they were available on model3part.com. But the promotional code, All Electric 2, is going to be good through the end of this year, which does give you a pretty good discount so click the link down in the description to get yours. They should be back in stock on Amazon next Monday. So you can see me slow down here and I have to disengage unfortunately because it's not gonna make that right hand turn still even though I turn in the turn signal. So I re-engage autopilot there and we are back on this road going through a smaller part of the town here where the speed limit is significantly slower than any other portion of the drive. It's only 25 miles an hour through here. So it does do a good job, and typically, if you've seen my other Kirby Country Road Test videos, I do have a lot of traffic in front and behind me. But I'm always trying to catch this railroad crossing right when it drops down to see if the car would stop. I don't know, let me know down in the comment section if you guys have ever been able to test that. Haven't been able to time that one up yet. So you can see it doesn't slow down at all. It maintains at 25 miles an hour, and it does feel too fast for me, um, especially with no traffic and all these cars parked tight on the side of the road here, even though that is technically the speed limit. Now, since there isn't a lot of traffic around, I'm actually able to engage autopilot earlier than I ever have before. So around this curve, you're gonna see it uh, try to, okay, I gotta take over. Went all the way over to the other side of the road. And I wanna go over why I think that happened. If you look right here, there's actually a big break in the double yellow line, which is really difficult for an autopilot system who just has this white line on the outside to go off of and there's no double yellow line throughout the middle, just a big gap. So that's where almost right after that gap is where the car starts to drift over to the other line. Just really, really confuses the vehicle. So the autopilot system did fail on that turn, but that was the first time I've ever actually been able to test the turn on all uh, seven other tests. So that first curve was relatively easy and as we approach this next curve it does start to speed up here as we leave this little town and we are going to go on this next curve that goes slightly to the left before going back to the right and then we have a, a pretty significant curve. If you guys have seen my other tests I know I found, sound like a broken record. Hey go watch the other tests and you're gonna see just how awesome autopilot has been incrementally advancing. So here's the left turn, and it, I love, love how smooth it is when it takes that smooth left turn there, and it just is so effortless compared to the first couple tests. I mean, this is just a breeze. So also pretty new with this version 10 software, which we don't have a lot of oncoming traffic, but I do like how the autopilot system shows the driver that oncoming traffic as the cars approach. Now, I will say it is not 100% yet. I mean, we are in the first iteration of this uh, newer user interface on the touch display, and it is about, I would say, 70 to 80% accurate. There is a lot of times, especially around curves, I've noticed that it does miss oncoming traffic. So we're coming up to a pretty significant curve here. I do. Get a, we do get a break from this truck here pulling out and it does slow down, but it doesn't head straight for the embankment like we've seen in previous tests. So if we look here again in slow-mo, it does a pretty good job and it reacts really quickly coming back over to the left and away from that embankment on that other side. Now, if we go in a different view, you can see the autopilot lines are actually maintaining pretty straight ahead, which is impressive. Now I did this other view so you could see the blue lines. I know it's a little bit washed out, but I really, really like how autopilot slowed down a little bit 
when it was unsure. And that I'm also gonna point out on a couple curves that we have coming up, which in previous software versions, it would just take the curve at whatever max speed is set. So if the max speed is set to 40 miles an hour or 30 miles an hour, it would just take it at that speed. Whereas you see the autopilot system here approaching a curve and it will actually slow down like a regular human driver would expect. Now, previously on my curvy country road test videos, I think it was test number three, it's kind of a little bit nerve wracking being behind the driver's seat and the car is just going full speed, let's say 35, 40 miles an hour around a curve where a regular human driver would have slowed down, let's say five to 10 miles per hour. So we're going, we have a downhill climb here before we are going to veer to the right on a pretty big blind turn. And I want you to watch the speedometer on this turn. So as we approach the turn and you can see the road kind of ends, your vision uh, where you can see the curve kind of ends. Let me zoom in here so you can see the speedometer. It goes up to 41 because we're going downhill and then it goes down to 36, 35, 34 because the car is not able to see around the curve. Now if we go back to test number one, an older software, you can see that this is way before version 10. So this is an older software and you can see that it took it at full speed versus now the car is actually slowing down about six miles per hour below the max speed because it recognizes that is a curve and it just takes it just like a normal human would, which is really impressive. This autopilot software is really improving quickly. So we have another curve coming up here to the left and it does something very similar. It gets down to 34, 35 miles an hour. So it drops down about five miles per hour before getting back up to 40 miles per hour, which I have the max speed set for this test. So we have another curve coming up here, and this is kind of like a blind curve, but it does slow down a little bit before slowing down pretty significant amount because we kind of go up and down, so it's hard for the autopilot cameras to see where the road is, but it does a good job and I don't have to take over like I did in previous tests. So there you can see, as soon as it recognizes that it's a pretty severe curve, it slows down actually to 31 miles per hour, so nine miles per hour down. So we have another blind right curve coming up here and it's going to do the same thing. It's actually gonna slow down again. I'm sorry that the touch screen is a little washed out, my GoPro. Let's see if this filter helps out a little bit. We can see it drops down to 32 miles per hour taking the curve, so eight miles per hour slower, th or 31 right there, versus older software versions have just taken that curve at the max speed, or 40 miles per hour in this case, which is a little scary when you're a driver. This feels a lot more natural as sitting behind the wheel. It feels a lot better, it feels a lot safer, which is great because obviously I'm a Tesla fan, but now this is gonna appeal to a lot broader audience. So the last left curve coming up, it does hug that right hand side a little bit, but it does end up slowing down. We're at 29 miles per hour, 30 miles an hour taking that curve. That is a sharp curve there. So it does a great job. Really fantastic job, passes with flying colors again, passing every single curve, not counting the first one of course, without any autopilot disengagement on my behalf. So I wanna to go to another section of the road where we can engage autopilot and then we are on a road with no lane lines. And I wanna do this because I did another video in a previous software version. Now this footage you're seeing here is the same 12.2 version 10 software, but we're actually passing cars now. And it's doing a phenomenal job staying to the right hand side of the road, even though there's no lane lines. I mean, the lane position that it's doing here is way better than even, I think it was three or four software updates ago where the autopilot system would kind of just splitting the difference and taking its uh, path right down the middle because there was no lanes. But you can see it's obviously hugging this right hand side and passing cars with zero lane lines. That is just super impressive. Great job, version 10 is something really, really special. So in this video, I don't have any new enhanced summon, but I am working on 
a lot more tests for you guys and I will push out another video as soon as that one's ready. Head over to my Amazon shop where I have all the products that I've recommended and tested in all of my videos, not to mention the gear that I use to make these videos. Huge shout out to my all electric tier supporters, our man of men and Akram Atul. Thank you so much guys. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so yet, click that subscribe button and I will see you guys in the next one.